In this video, I will be discussing about the arc length for curves in Cartesian coordinates. So consider the graph of the curve whose equation is y equals f of x which is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and suppose the graph of that curve is like this and this graph is defined by the equation y equals f of x and our goal is to find the length of this arc from this point say p sub 0 up to this point say p sub n so how long is this arc now suppose that this point p sub 0 is having an x coordinate at a and this p sub n is also having an x coordinate at x equals b then we can find the length of this arc from p sub 0 to this p sub n and the idea is to subdivide the whole arc into sub arcs here so suppose these are the subdivisions of this arc so if this is p sub n this is p sub n minus 1 and if this is p sub 0 this is also p sub 1 this is p sub 2 and so on and so forth so suppose this is our arbitrary point here so this is p sub i so a point before that is p sub i minus 1 so suppose we represent an arbitrary point here now the idea is to approximate these sub arcs by these chords here so it's just a straight line approximating the length of these sub arcs now remember that these chords are straight line segments and mathematically the length of the i arc is approximated by this i arc so suppose this is our i arc here because this is our p sub i and this is our p sub i minus 1 here as you can see because i am just magnifying this arc here and this is approximated by this chord which is the line segment and because our goal is to find the length of the whole arc so say the whole arc is represented by s this one from p sub 0 to p sub n say that is the arc s then we can represent this i arc as the delta s just the sub arc from point p sub i minus 1 to p sub i and the idea is to approximate the length of this sub arc this i arc by the length of this chord here and the length of this chord can be approximated if we will draw a line that is perpendicular to each other so you form here a right triangle so suppose this is our delta x here the chains in the x and this is our delta y here the chains in the y so we say that since every i arc can be approximated by the length of its corresponding i chord then we can use the very popular theorem which is a theorem from pythagoras the pythagorean theorem that the length of this i arc this delta s here this one the i arc the square of this length can be approximated by the square of the length of the hypotenuse our chord i chord here and we know that the square of the length of the i chord can be obtained using the pythagorean theorem because that is the sum of the square of the length of delta x and the square of delta y this one 
and taking the square root of both sides, we have our delta S, which is the square root of the sum of the squares of delta X and delta Y. Now take note that this is only an approximation because we know from the fact that delta S here, this i arc is longer than this i chord here. So there is a difference in the length. However, this approximation becomes perfect when n is approaching to infinity. So as delta x approaches to zero in infinitesimal this delta s can be written as ds which is equal to the square root of dx quantity squared plus dy quantity squared and if you are going to manipulate the radicand there which is the square of dx plus the square of dy by multiplying some expression that is equal to 1 so that you will not alter the value here you will have the value of your ds as the square root of dx quantity squared plus dy quantity squared all over dx quantity squared but this is still multiplied by dx quantity squared and simplifying further we have this square root of dx squared divided by dx squared the result is 1 and this dy squared divided by dx squared we can rewrite this one as dy over dx quantity squared and our dx squared inside the radical symbol can be factored outside as dx. Now take note that this is only the length of this i arc. So to find the whole length of the arc S, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to obtain the length of this whole arc S using the definite integral as thus integration of all the i arc which is expressed as the square root of 1 plus dy dx quantity squared dx from a to b because you will be subdividing the whole arcs into infinitely many sub arcs from a to b or you may write the length of the whole arc as the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of f of x because we know dy dx is the derivative of the function y with respect to x dx here. So therefore, this is the formula that we can use in finding the length of an arc. Now, let's apply this formula that we have derived in example number one here. Find the length of the arc of the function f of x, which is equal to 2 thirds times 1 plus x squared, quantity raised to the exponent 3 halves between x equals 0 and x equals 3. So first and foremost, let us sketch the graph of this function. And to sketch the graph of that, we need to find the value of y when x is 0. So when x is equal to 0, what is then our y? So our y, which is this one here, is 2 thirds times 1 plus 0 squared to the power 3 halves. And this is equal to 2 thirds only because this 1 plus 0 squared is 1 and 1 to the power 3 halves is 1 and therefore the product of 1 and 2 thirds is just 2 thirds. So that's the value of y when x is equal to 0. But when x is equal to 3, 
because we want to find the length of the arc from x equals 0 to x equals 3, then our y is equal to 2 thirds times 1 plus 3 squared to the power 3 halves. And this is equal to 2 thirds times 10 to the power 3 halves. Because 3 squared is 9, and 9 plus 1, the sum is 10. And this is approximately equal to 21.1. So therefore, the points are having coordinates of 0 and 2 thirds. And the other one having coordinates of 3 and this one which is approximately equal to 21.1 here. So actually the graph of this is a parabola that is opening upward. So this is this one here. So it's just a parabola opening upward. And this point is having coordinates of 0 2 thirds this point here but when your x is 3 so this one if this is 3 your x is 3 the y is 21.1 so this is having coordinates of 3 and this 21.1 which is exactly expressed as 2 thirds times 10 to the power 3 halves and our goal is to find the length of this arc this one the length of this one here and according to the formula that we have derived we need to find the derivative of our function first so the derivative of the function so we write f prime of x which is equal to two-thirds the constant times the derivative of this exponential form here so we write the exponent 3 halves here and then we multiply to this exponential form 1 plus x squared to the power 3 halves minus 1 which is 1 half and then by the chain rule we need to multiply it by the derivative of the base because the derivative of 1 is 0 but the derivative of x squared is 2x so therefore our derivative f prime of x is equal to 1 plus x squared to the power 1 half times 2x because these 2 thirds and 3 halves the product is 1 and thus our length for the whole arc s is obtained by integrating this square root function of 1 plus the derivative of our f function but we need to square this one and then integrate the whole thing from 0 to 3 so substituting our derivative to our integrand we have the integral from 0 to 3 of the square root of 1 plus the quantity of 1 plus x squared to the power 1 half times 2x here and our arc length is equal to the integral from 0 to 3 of the square root of this one plus the square of this one whose exponent is 1 half so this is 1 plus x squared and the square of 2x is 4x squared there so therefore, if we simplify our radicand, we can multiply this 4x squared to this binomial here. So 1 plus 4x squared plus 4x to the fourth there. And we know that this radicand is a perfect square trinomial. So this is the integral from 0 to 3 of the quantity 1 plus 2x squared to the power of 2 there and simplifying further we have the integral from 0 to 3 of just 1 plus 2x squared because this square root and the square cancels each other for the positive value and 
integrating this integrand, we have the integral of 1, which is x, and the integral of x squared, which is x cubed over 3 here. And this will be evaluated from 0 to 3. And evaluating this one from the limits of integration, we have 3 plus 2 thirds times 3 to the power 3 minus the quantity of 0 plus 2 thirds of 0 cubed here. And we know that the cube of 3 is 27, but 27 divided by 3, the quotient is 9. And this will be multiplied by 2 because we know that this expression goes to 0 here. So we have the arc length of 3 plus 18. Therefore, our length of the arc is 21 units. So this is the length of this arc here. Now let's proceed to our example number 2. Determine the total perimeter of the hypocycloid of four cusps with the equation x to the power 2 thirds plus y to the power 2 thirds which is equal to 4 to the power 2 thirds. So first, we need to sketch the graph of this hypocycloid. We know that when x is 0, our y is 4 and negative 4. Why? Because if this is 0, y to the power 2 thirds is equal to 4 to the power 2 thirds. And because this can be expressed as the square of the cube root of y and this one as the square of the cube root of 4, then both sides are squares. So therefore, if you take the square roots of both sides, there will be two roots there. So we have 4 and negative 4. So the points are 0, 4 and 0, negative 4. But when our x is negative 4, then our y is 0. Why? Because when this is negative 4, the square of negative 4 is just positive. So this one cancels with this one. So our y to the power 2 thirds is equal to 0. Therefore, y is 0. Thus, our point is having coordinates of negative 4 and 0. But when our x is 4, we know easily that this is also 0. Because 4 to the power 2 thirds is just the same with the right hand side. So this cancels each other, so y to the power 2 thirds is equal to 0. Thus, our y is 0. So the point is having coordinates of 4, 0. And if you are going to plot these points here, when your x is 0, there will be 2 y, negative 4 and 4. So if this is negative 4, and this is our positive 4, then when x is 0, we have two points. But when your x is negative 4, you have only one point here. Say this is negative 4, the y is 0. But when your x is positive 4, the y is also 0. So therefore, the graph is like this. So it's a hypocycloid that is having four cusps here. And our goal is to find the length of the whole perimeter of the figure. And we know that this one is having equations of y to the power 2 thirds, which is equal to 4 to the power 2 thirds minus x to the power 2 thirds. If you move this x term to the right hand side, and if you are going to find the derivative of this equation implicitly, we have 2 thirds times y to the power negative 1 third because we need to subtract 1 from 2 thirds and then we multiply by the derivative of the base which is y prime. And this one, the derivative is 0 because this is a constant. 
However, this one is having derivative of 2 thirds x to the power negative 1 third. So our y prime, if you do simplify this one, solving for y prime, this is equal to the negative of y over x to the power 1 third. Because these two 2 thirds cancels each other. And because the exponent is negative, this will be placed in the denominator. But this one, which is in the denominator, can be placed in the numerator because the exponent is negative. And for what purpose? In order to have a positive exponent. So therefore, our y prime is this one. And thus, our whole arc is having a length of the integral of the square root of 1 plus the square of the derivative. And our derivative is y prime there. But remember, this is integrating say from 0 to 4 so this is only the length from this point up to this point here but we need to multiply it by 4 because there are 4 like this in this drawing here so therefore our whole arc is equal to 4 times the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of 1 plus the negative of y over x to the power one third but we need to square this one in order to follow the formula for the arc length so therefore our whole arc is equal to 4 times the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of 1 plus y to the power 2 thirds divided by x to the power 2 thirds because when this exponent of 2 is multiplied to 1 third, the result is 2 thirds. But this negative becomes positive because this is a square exponent. So we have to combine these two terms here. So our whole arc is equal to 4 times the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of the fraction having a denominator of x to the power 2 thirds so this becomes x to the power 2 thirds plus y to the power 2 thirds there and we know that our numerator in our radicand is equal to 4 to the power 2 thirds because this is our numerator so instead of writing that one I will write 4 to the power 2 thirds and this will be divided by x to the power 2 thirds dx here. So therefore, our whole arc which is equal to 4 times the integral from 0 to 4 is equal to the square root of 4 over x to the power 2 thirds dx. And Expressing the whole integrand as an exponential form, we have 4 over x in the integrand to the power 1 third because this numerator of 2 cancels to this square root here. So we can express this fraction as a product of 4 to the power 1 third times x to the power negative one third here and because we can factor out the constant outside the integral symbol we have four times four to the power one third times the integral from zero to four of x to the power negative one third dx and multiplying these constants here we have four to the power 4 thirds because we add the exponent 1 plus 1 third and the sum is 4 thirds. The integral of x to the power of negative 1 third is x to the power 2 thirds because I need to add 1 to this negative 1 third and this will be divided by 2 thirds evaluated from 0 to 4. So therefore, our whole arc is 4 to the power 4 thirds times 
three halves and this will be multiplied by substituting 4 to this x to the power 2 thirds so 4 to the power 2 thirds minus 0 to the power 2 thirds here so we have the whole arc is equal to 4 to the power 6 thirds times 3 halves because 2 plus 4 because when you multiply this term by this term we simply add the exponent so 4 thirds plus 2 thirds that's 6 thirds and 6 thirds is 4 squared here and when multiplied by 3 halves this is 16 times 3 which is 48 divided by 2 the quotient the result is 24 so the whole arc is having a length of 24 units so this is having a length of 6 6 6 and 6 so therefore the whole perimeter is 24 units there now let's proceed to our last example here find the length of the curve defined by y equals the natural log of cosine x from x equals 0 to x pi over 3 so first and foremost let us sketch the graph of this curve and the graph of this curve is a set of curves that is opening downward so we have a curve this one we have another curve here and so on and so forth these are curves opening downward whose vertices are on the x-axis but the question is to find the length of the arc from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 3 and pi over 3 is approximately equal to 1.05 so at 1.05 how long is this arc so if this is at pi over 3 here so this point how long is this arc here so from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 3 so since our curve is defined by the equation y equals the natural log of the cosine x then the derivative of this is equal to the derivative of cosine x which is negative sine x over this cosine x here because that is the derivative of the natural log which is the derivative of cosine x over this cosine x and we know from our trigonometry the identity of this which is equal to tangent x so our y prime is equal to negative tangent x hence using the formula that we have just derived the length of the arc that we want to find is the integral from 0 to pi over 3 here from 0 to pi over 3 of the square root of 1 plus the square of y prime there so our integral from 0 to pi over 3 of the square root of 1 plus the negative tangent x quantity squared dx but we know that the square of a negative number is just the positive number so we have 1 plus the square of tangent x so we have tangent squared x there and since we've learned from our high school days that 1 plus tangent squared x is equal to second squared x using our trigonometric identity and the square root of a square in the positive domain cancels each other so this is just second x there and if you are going to multiply this second x by a fraction that is equal to second x plus tangent x and having a denominator which is the same 
with our numerator, we realize that the product of that, which is equal to second squared x plus second x times tangent x as the product of this one and this binomial here. And this is divided by second x plus tangent x there and we've noticed that our numerator is the derivative of the denominator and we know that if we represent our denominator as our u so u equals second x plus tangent x we have realized that our du is the differential of second x which is second x tangent x and the differential of tangent x is second squared x there and we realize that this u which is in the denominator the du is in the numerator so by substitution we can substitute our numerator as du there so instead of writing this one I will write the representation which is du here and the denominator is u so instead of writing this one which is this I will write its representation as u so integrating this one from u of 0 to u of pi over 3 and we know that the integral of du over u is the natural log of u evaluated from u of 0 to u of pi over 3 and going back to our original expression of u we have this one as our u so second x plus tangent x here and this will be evaluated from 0 to pi over 3 so our whole length of the arc is equal to the natural log of second of pi over 3 plus tangent of pi over 3 and this will be subtracted when you substitute this 0 to this expression here so the natural log of second of 0 plus tangent of 0 here and you can recall from your trigonometry that the second of pi over 3 is 2 and the tangent of pi over 3 is square root of 3 because these are special angles and the natural log of the second of 0 which is 1 but the tangent of 0 which is 0 so we have the natural log of 2 plus the square root of 3 minus the natural log of 1 and this is equal to the natural log of 2 plus the square root of 3 over 1 if you apply the properties of logarithms here so therefore our whole arc is having a length of the natural log of 2 plus square root of 3 and you can check your calculator that this is approximately equal to 1.32 units so this is our length of this arc from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 3 and that's it if you learned something today, please check out my channel for more videos like this and click subscribe. Click the notification bell below so you'll get notified whenever I'll be posting a new video. Don't forget to like this video to show your support. And always remember to map your way up. Thank you.